The Alabama State Hornets are now winners of four straight games after surviving a scare in Tallahassee. The Florida a and Rattlers brought that heat, but the Hornets were able to cool them off. As we go into this edition of the Sting, let's look into last week's game versus the Rattlers. This game was defined by mistakes. A lot of self-inflicted wounds by the Hornets and also self-inflicted wounds by the Rattlers. The Alabama State Hornet defense was no doubt the reason we won this game. We had two interceptions along with three sacks. Those two interceptions came in critical times. The first one was in the red zone by Blake Stovall, our walk-on sophomore middle linebacker. And the last one was in the clutch in the fourth quarter by Colin Robinson. The three sacks came from Lawrence Martin, Mike Considine, and Kyle Gray in that order. Another thing that happened in this game was that Bobby Newton went down with a leg injury that took him out for the next two quarters. And then came in TJ Thomas. Now, on the video, I said that he was a sophomore. I forgot he's actually a redshirt freshman and a walk on at that. TJ Thomas came in, threw his first touchdown in his collegiate career, and we thought we had it in the bag until Tim Brown fumbled the ball late in the fourth quarter. We turned the ball over four times in this game, but the defense bailed us out each time. Our special team still needs work. The run game wasn't bad, but we did give up two big runs to Dockery, their fullback. But we go in, we won our fourth game in a row, and we move forward. Justin Chambers was so good, though. He ran over three, for over 300 yards on 20 carries, two touchdowns. And as you can see, Will Grant had 15 tackles, four for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble. Woohoo, Lord. Meanwhile, over at the Sunbelt AK to me, at, you had Demetrius Fisher and Thomas Williams winning Players of the Week in that conference. The Max Swag looks like this now. Texas Southern is still running things in the East. We're still running things in the West. So, so far, the SWAC media is looking very nice right now with their predictions. But we have to keep on winning. Now, let's take a look at the top 25 polls real quick. You're going to see not a lot of upsets, but just one. The Florida Gators lost to LSU. Wow, that looked like it was a pretty close game too, man. And then there was another one. Yeah, that's right. The Texas Longhorns lost to Oklahoma in their annual Red River shootout. Meanwhile, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons are now in the top 25. That's surprising. I believe they beat Florida State too. Ooh, woo. Now let's look at some recruiting news real quick. So we got some players that are ready to make their official visits to Alabama State. The first one is... Wendell Davis. We're going to set him up to come to the Bethune Cookman game next week. That's also a big game, too, because Bethune Cookman's been giving us all kind of hell in this series since we started playing them. We're going to give him the pitcher program prestige. The next guy we're looking forward to getting this weekend is that middle linebacker, William Dorsey. We need him the most because we're not good at middle linebacker, despite the fact that Blake Stovall has been holding it down. But we have a huge deficiency of talent at the middle linebacker spot. Don't get me wrong, Blake Stovall has been great for us. Four career interceptions. The only thing with Blake Stovall is he misses a lot of tackles and gets ran over a lot too. But we definitely need to upgrade at middle linebacker. So we got Wendell Davis, and William Dorsey coming to town. Marcus Wilson is still on, he still has us on top of his list. So that's still a good sign, but we still don't know what pitch to give him because he doesn't care about play and all that stuff. At the end, I think he just wants to go to a bigger school. Jo Chris Jones has us still at number three on his list. Brad Anderson, it looks like we're in the bat to get him right now. The meter's gone up well ahead of Miami. Blake Clayton looks like he's on his way to Montgomery, too, to play for us. Now, let's look at some, some of the stats on the season. No doubt the best quarterback in this conference is Brian Merritt, the Alcorn State quarterback. 
That man's been balling this season so far. 18 touchdowns and only three interceptions. And we're like, what, four or five games into the season. So, Bobby Newton got to step it up. He is second in the conference in quarterback rating, though. We no doubt have the best running back in the country, Justin Chambers, a.k.a. the man all the way from VA, averaging almost 200 yards per game. And he has almost 40 broken tackles this season. 40 broken tackles, that's crazy. So Justin Chambers will have 1,000 yards in the first six games of the season. No doubt he's getting 1,000 yards next game. But I'm just anxious to see what he's going to end up with by the end of the season. Because he's playing phenomenal right now. So we look at the receiver receiving stats. Kevin Scott is second in the conference in receiving yards right behind Lamont Bush, the Alcorn State quarterback. Jason White is having a decent season so far, but things could be a lot better. But join us next time. We got the Bethune Cutman Wildcats coming to town. A team that has ran all over us since this series started. We split 1-1 in the series so far. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Peace.